name is John Hawkins, and I'm president of Engineers Without Borders, Walla Walla University, a chapter of the national organization. And a couple years ago, I received an email sent out to the campus asking if anyone was interested, and I thought it was an awesome organization. My name is Curtis Nelson, and I'm a professor in the School of Engineering, and I am the faculty advisor for the Walla Walla chapter of Engineers Without Borders. Engineers Without Borders is a national organization. It has about 300 chapters, primarily on universities, uh, over 10,000 members, and growing strong. My name is Sally Roth, and I'm the vice president and co-founder of the chapter here at Walla Walla University. Our current project is in Luis Garcia, Honduras. Um, we're looking at expanding a school for a community that was hit by uh, hurricanes and had to relocate. Uh, we're also going to be helping them with um, sanitation issues that they're having. The community has been in place for less than 10 years as the people were displaced by Hurricane Mitch in 1998. So they moved there without any material goods and the town itself kind of sprung out of nowhere and so the infrastructure is almost uh, non-existent. My name is Amber Mitchell and I am a senior civil engineer and I went on the assessment trip for the project down to Honduras as well as uh, I've taken on project lead. Right now there's a small schoolroom that exists. It's not nearly large enough um, for the amount of kids in the community and we we're hoping to add several more classrooms uh, as well as a few other features to um, make it a better place uh, for learning. Uh, our project consists of basically five main things. Uh, five basic needs of the school. Uh, first, they don't have enough space to teach. So uh, with a 30% average growth rate per year, uh, and they're already over, overflowing, they really need more classrooms. So we're aiming to provide five new classrooms. Uh, they don't have bathrooms. They have nowhere to, on the campus where the students can go to the restroom. So they need uh, restrooms, and they need the ones that they, they need the unfunctional flushing toilets on campus to be put in, to be uh, made functional. They, they have food at the school, um, donated food, but they don't have anywhere to cook it, so uh, they can't guarantee that the food is, they have to send it home, or they can't guarantee that the food is cooked hygienically, or that it's even given to the children. Uh, they have uh, major septic issues when the the outhouses from the town uh, flood during the rainy season, flood over the soccer field where the students play. All of this septic needs, this uh, septic material needs to be drained around the schoolyard and uh, have a drainage uh, system and fence around the schoolyard and also an administration space. They need to have somewhere where they can keep school records, where they can keep students' records because um, they don't currently have an office. I think the uh, records are currently being kept at the school director's house, which is in a neighboring town. He comes in and all of the files are way off site. My name is Wanda Nelson and I'm the health point person of the Walla Walla University chapter. I've been abroad a lot, but in being abroad, um, I've never ever been to a place where there was such dire need for basic health care. And basic, basic health care would be with the next storm. Um, the schoolyard itself was pretty much filled with litter because there is no, no garbage dump anywhere. I found a syringe and a needle um, in the schoolyard. It was all bent. Um, and you know, it was just, it was just kind of scary because kids run around in bare feet all the time. When you think about the things that are there, a lot of the uh, amoebas are in the water, a lot of worms are in the ground, and if you think about the ground that's covered with waste, you know, human fecal matter, animal fecal matter, and it's the schoolyard where the kids play and they're rolling in this nice waste water, there's just quite a bit of uh, chance for disease and the transmission of disease. The project in whole, as a whole will allow more children to go to school first and second uh, contain spread of diseases among uh, the vulnerable children of the community. 
through, through eliminating a layer of sewage on their soccer field for one, um, and through providing uh, sinks for them to clean their hands, uh, after using the restrooms that we will put in that don't yet exist. Just the whole thing is very, uh, very complete sanitary package for the health of the students and of course the education which I believe very strongly in. Working with Engineers Without Borders allows students such as myself to work on projects that we actually see through completion. Um, they're not just hypothetical, we're not just testing a beam to see if it works, but we're actually designing a beam that's going to go into a building that kids are going to sit in and learn. And we're going to see it built, we're going to have pictures, we're going to be able to show people, you know, this is something I did. I think uh, one of the primary benefits to students is to make them globally aware of the benefit that their skills as engineers can bring to the world, particularly the developing world. Good morning, teacher. How are you? How are you? Very, very thank you. Very, very thank you. How are you? How are you? <laughs>